No Rest for the Wicked has released into early access and the devs have hit the ground running, releasing multiple hotfixes already, even one while I'm in the process of writing the script. The devs are really putting in the work into this game. No Rest for the Wicked set up a lot of expectations with the developers even saying this will aim to push the ARPG genre forward. A big claim, but one that had a lot of eyes on it as it reached its early access release. No Rest for the Wicked currently sits at a mixed 67 on Steam, but the score is going upwards pretty quick, with many people praising its looks, world design and overall presentation of the game. All things I would agree with is the game looks stunning from the first few minutes, the art style is immaculate, the character designs look unique, and the voice acting is top notch, and the world of Isla Sacra just feels great to explore. But looks only go so far, and No Rest for the Wicked's main focus is on its brutal precision based combat. The combat and the many mechanics surrounding it are what's drawn a slightly mixed reception on the game. Now the game's combat is slower paced, brutal and deliberate, leading many players to praise its uniqueness and feel, as there really is nothing quite like No for the wicked, with each weapon having a distinct feel, animation set, and the ability to customize weapons with unique runes and movesets. However, according to current reviews, combat appears to be considered as almost too brutal or too hardcore, with enemies being overtuned, and a durability system that seemingly distracts from the game's combat focus, and instead has players needing to focus on more tedious things to upkeep equipment, healing items, and upgrades for sacrament. Quality of life features do appear to be missing, such as rebindable controls, performance issues, although they are working on that at the moment, and a button layout where the dodge, sprint, and jump are all the same button. But to be honest, many of the negative things mentioned by the community are all things that can be tuned or improved upon. And I mean, this is early access, and frankly, this game has only just released, and it is already in a great state. The developers have been very responsive to the community feedback and the ongoing development of what's happening with No Rest for the Wicked. They are very open with what they're doing and they have even said what are the latest changes coming to the game. So as soon as the game released they went over what stuff they're going to be working on first. So the first one and probably one of the biggest ones is the performance and stability. So we have had hotfixes already that have been dealing with performance but this continues to be at the forefront of what they're going for. Making sure the game runs smoothly on all types of systems even getting it to run on the Steam Deck. So throughout the early access journey performance and stability is just going to be a continuous thing they're going to be working on. The next thing is they are going to be bringing key rebinding options. As you would have seen the game released with no rebindable control options so they're going to be introducing that as soon as they can along with localization so some languages might not have been included in the early access release but they're going to be iterating on that they're just going to be making sure they can cater for as much languages as possible another thing they mentioned is faders so when you're walking around the environment some of the parts of the environment on the edges of the map will begin to fade some of them aren't working correctly so they will be working on that another thing is the controller ui improvements so currently it only has the xbox display buttons they're going to work on having Having those other buttons show up as well so it's not too confusing. So some of the developers have been very vocal on social media just giving us hints at what's coming to the game at some point so let's go through what we have seen. The first one is being able to access stash items from shops or while you're repairing items. Currently if you want to repair items you can only do so with what you have in your inventory but if you need something you have to go back to your stash. Having the option to access stash items would be very good. Along with that stack inventory sizes. So currently for example if you had mushrooms you can only store 20 in one inventory space. One of the developers even asked should they increase that stack to 99 or just have the option to be able to improve that over the course of the game. It's good to see the type of ideas they're going to be doing throwing around when it comes to stack inventory sizes. Another big thing is the option to respec your character. So currently when you pick up weapons you might have to have 13 strength to use a sword but then of course you might pick up something else that requires dexterity but you don't have the stats available to you so you feel a bit limited. So giving the option to respec to use other weapons is going to be a bit more a bit more flexible when it comes to developing your character. Another very cool thing is they have hinted at a big farming update. So that basically means you'll be able to get some plots, some bits of land and be able to purchase seeds and plant some food so you can grow your own potatoes, grow your own tomatoes and things like that that will help you make your healing items which is a very, a very cool feature so I guess you'd have the housing and you'd also have the farming part of that as well which would be very cool. No rest for the wicked systems are quite in depth with the enchanting, the runes, the infusing and as you can see there's not a lot of informative text explaining on how things work you're sort of just thrown into it but that's just part of the early access journey. 
They're going to be working on tutorials and just descriptors to explain the various systems within the game. Also, in player housing, you can store a lot of other stuff. Once you get the housing part, you have more access to chests, but they're looking into more ways to stash your items. They haven't really developed on that. I'm not sure how they can expand that even more, but I guess people are getting pretty full up with the amount of stuff you can get in the game. And the final thing is they've talked about how the Crucible plans to expand over the time. They have mentioned it before, but they have compared it to Hades. So they're looking at the Crucible being a more roguelike element to the game where you can jump in, do some runs and have the opportunity to get special loot or equipment that you would not see in the main world of No Rest for the Wicked. But it sounds like a very cool thing to be a part of. So the developers are definitely putting in the work, putting out hotfixes consistently. I'd say they're probably even doing another hotfix as I am recording this video at the moment, but I'm definitely excited to see No Rest for the Wicked progress. I have high hopes for the game. It definitely is quite brutal and unforgiving in some parts, but that's just the way of the design. And that's just what early access is. They're going to be tuning it. They're going to be improving on the features. And there's just something about this game underneath the fine tuning and stuff like that that needs to be done. You can tell there is a very good game underneath it all. So I'm going to be covering this game's development journey until we get to 1.0 and beyond. So be sure to like if you enjoyed and consider subscribing for more No Rest for the Wicked coverage as I cover their development journey. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.